I want to talk today about a very famous court case which happens in 1884 and it involved uh, two men, Dudley and Stevens were their names, and the facts of the case were as follows. They were English seamen and they were set adrift in a lifeboat along with two others, a man named Brooks and a man, uh, an unidentified uh, cabin boy after a storm had wrecked their ship. And they were set adrift uh, near the Cape of Good Hope, which is in southern Africa, but not that near. In fact, they were probably about 1,600 miles from the Cape of Good Hope when the shipwreck occurred. They didn't have many supplies or provisions in their lifeboats. They had a couple of tens of turnips that they fed upon for a few days, and then they caught a turtle. But up until day 20, they more or less had gone without food and they had occasionally caught some water in their jackets, but they were basically without water as well. On about day 18 or so, uh, the two of the men, in fact three, uh, Dudley Stevens and Brooks, all had a conversation with each other. They didn't consult the cabin boy. And Dudley and Stevens talked about how they had families, and they didn't think that they should be the ones to do this, but that in order for the group, to survive, someone needed to be sacrificed to save the rest. And they implicated in their conversation the cabin boy, who was not consulted and was not party to the conversation. Uh, Stevens and Dudley agreed that this would be the best course of action to, to kill the cabin boy and then to uh, for the rest of them to feed on the cabin boy. Uh, but Brooks dissented, he disagreed, and of course the cabin boy wasn't consulted. The, uh, two days later, uh, Stevens and Dudley again talked with each other about taking this drastic measure. And Brooks was told, they told Brooks to go to the other side of the lifeboat. I think they told him to take a nap. And Stevens and Dudley went to the cabin boy and basically told him his time had come, drew a knife and uh, slit his throat, killed him on the spot. And then all three men, Brooks, Stevens, and Dudley, then fed upon the cabin boy for the next several days. On the fourth day after uh, they uh, had killed the cabin boy, they were picked up by a passing boat and then taken to uh, back to England, where they were immediately put into uh, a prisoner's dock. And this became a very famous case because, of course, Dudley and Stevens... Uh, killed a person, and the question was whether this is a case of murder. It was certainly a case of taking the life of an innocent person, which is the traditional definition of murder, but was it a case of extenuating circumstances playing such an important role that they mitigate the normal penalty for taking the life of an innocent person? At that time, of course, the normal penalty would have been the death penalty. Uh, Brooks did uh, participate in the aftermath. He fed upon the cabin boy for several days, but didn't participate in the act itself, and so was not put on trial. At any rate, people, in looking back at this case, fall basically into a couple of camps. Some people, we might call them deontologists, say that what matters most in a case like this is that a basic moral principle was violated. And that moral principle is that you ought not to take the life of an innocent person. Dudley and Stevens violated this principle. Ergo, they are guilty of murder. Ergo, they ought to be uh, sentenced to some kind of serious punishment, some sort of serious penalty, uh, whatever it happens to be, in order for justice to be served and for the law to pass judgment on their murder. Another camp of people looking back at this case, we might call them consequentialists, say, no, actually, the most important reality about this case is that uh, the community needed to be preserved, the community of four in the lifeboat. And the best outcome was for one of them to be sacrificed for the rest. And so what matters is that, oh, all, all in all, on balance, the decision that Dudley and Stevens made brought about the best consequences. They would have likely died before being picked up by the passing vessel another four days after all. Uh, passed before they were picked up by the passing vessel. And so consequentialists would be much less inclined to uh, 
pass great judgment upon the decisions of Dudley and Stevens because they would see the mitigating circumstances and especially the advantageous consequences resulting from the actions that they took as being sufficient to uh, justify their decision-making processes. At any rate, um, wherever you fall in uh, retrospect and looking back at this case, whether you think that, like most deontologists, a moral principle was violated, or whether you think that consequences ought to be the determining factor and uh, good consequences resulted on balance, not for the cabin boy, obviously, but for the community as a whole, uh, regardless of where you fall, uh, the reality uh, at the time was that uh, public opinion was both shocked, people were outraged, and they were also compassionate. Uh, the men were convicted, uh, but instead of getting the death penalty, which was the initial sentence, they uh, spent only 10 months in prison because the Queen of England at the time, Queen Victoria, commuted their sentence in response to uh, popular opinion largely. Uh, because people thought that although these men had committed murder and that that needed to be uh, expressed by the law, they needed to be convicted of that, nevertheless they ought not to receive normal sentencing for a murder conviction. And perhaps in that regard, the true outcome, 10 months in prison for Dudley and Stevens and then they walked and got, got out free, uh, may have expressed both those things at once, both that a murder was committed and also that it was not as serious an offense as uh, perhaps uh, a normal murder uh, ought to be uh, treated as. At any rate, it's a fascinating case, and I certainly encourage everybody, my students, uh, anyone who's interested in the case, to go back and look at the facts for yourself. Dudley and Stevens, Queen versus Dudley and Stevens is the name of it. It occurred in 18, 1884.